I'm Shannon out here in the garden at Ramsey County's Tamarack Nature Center and today we are talking about bees. Now I would bet most of you are probably afraid of bees but I think what you're really afraid of is wasps. Does anybody know the difference between a bee and a wasp? Well I've got a picture here for you. Can you see some differences between the bee and the wasp? I bet some of you notice that the bee is cute and fuzzy, while the wasp is sort of smooth and sleek. Also, the wasp looks a little angry. The bee is also a little bit plump and round, while the wasp is a little more streamlined and sleek. They have these really tiny waists, and they kind of nip in the middle there. Those are some things you can see. Some things you can't see. Bees are mostly interested in collecting nectar and pollen and bringing them back to the hive to feed to the larva and to create honey, which is bee food. A wasp, on the other hand, the adults will eat the nectar, but the larvae are carnivorous. So the adults will actually kill some insects and bring those back to the hive to feed to their larva. So wasps are pretty important for pest control. If you don't like having a lot of bugs around, they help us out with that. Now, most of you are thinking that wasps are mean and stingy. Yes, you're probably more likely to get stung by a wasp than a bee, but uh, that doesn't mean they're mean and stingy. We just need to give them some space. Bees, on the other hand, hardly ever sting at all. It's their last resort. The honeybee especially, because when a honeybee stings you, they die. Their stinger is barbed and it stays in your skin and actually pulls out some of their organs, so they can't live after they sting you. But we are here to talk about bees in general today, so we want to show you some of our favorite bees. Does anyone know how many different species of bees there are in North America? 4,000. That's a lot of bees. I don't have time to talk about them all, so I'm going to talk about two of my favorites. One of them is a bumblebee. Most of you have probably seen bumblebees around your house. You find them on flowers a lot. They love to pollinate our wildflowers. Now, some people will tell you that bumblebees cannot sting you. This is not entirely true. The male bumblebees don't have a stinger, but the female bumblebees do. However, bumblebees are super chill. They don't want to sting you. They just want to do their business. So if you're nice to them, they'll be nice to you. Another one of my favorite bees is this cute little girl right here, the mason bee. Mason bees are really tiny and also super chill. They do not want to sting you either. Now the cool thing about mason bees is that they can pollinate a lot of the plants that a honeybee cannot. So it is good to have both mason bees and honeybees around because they will get your whole entire garden pollinated. It's really easy to keep mason bees in your yard with very little tools and very little time. Check out our links and you can see some easy ways that you can have a mason bee colony in your backyard to help you with pollination. Bees are very important pollinators. Your whole garden is pollinated by some kind of a bee. So be nice to the bees if you like your flowers and your tomatoes and your cucumbers and all the things that are coming out of your garden. You need to thank a bee because that's what bees do for us. I would love it if you could all come on out to the nature center and check out some of the blooming flowers around here and see if you can find some bees. Because as the wildflowers bloom, the bees are gonna become more active and you should be able to find the mason bees and the bumblebees and some of the honeybees out flying around the nature center. So come check it out. Check out our links to learn more about some other kinds of bees that are here in Minnesota. And stay tuned to our Facebook page so you can see some more bee videos later this week.